You're listening to the Psych Central Podcast, where guest experts in the field of psychology and mental health share thought-provoking information using plain, everyday language. Here's your host, Gabe Howard. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Podcast. Calling into the show today, we have Dr. John Grohall. Dr. Grohall is the editor-in-chief of PsychCentral.com and the man who founded Psych Central 25 years ago. John, welcome to the show. Great to be with you today, Gabe. It's an exciting achievement. I've never done anything for 25 years. <laughs> it's incredibly impressive. And I want to start back 26 years ago, 27 years ago, before Psych Central existed, when you were coming up with the idea for this website. How did you get this idea? So it all began in when I was in grad school down in Florida, and I, I, I had a bad first year in school because I learned about the death of my childhood best friend who took his own life. And that was a difficult thing to come to terms with because none of us saw the situation at the time. Uh, that he was going through, and he didn't feel comfortable in reaching out to anyone. This was back in 1990. And um, I needed help, but I didn't exactly know where to turn. One of the places I ended up turning to was a support group online. And that support group was on a section of the internet we call Usenet, uh, which hosts news groups. We call them news groups. They're actually just what we would today call like a discussion forum, like Reddit or something, or even Facebook. Similar in the sense of these were groups set up to discuss specific topics. One of those topics was a depression group. And I just found it astounding, amazing, that there was a online support group for depression in 1990. And this is before the internet was a household name. Yeah, this well, this is this predates the web, and and that's why it's hard to explain and hard to to have people wrap their minds around it. Because here we are, thirty years later, and to understand that people were doing online support, emotional support, and information sharing uh, thirty years ago. So these are not new phenomena. So for people to sort of look at the internet and say, oh, you know, it's not real or you can't have a, a real emotional connection with other people, I, I laugh at them because we, we've been, people have been having real emotional connections uh, through internet technologies for well over 30 years. It actually goes back even further than that. Yeah, I remember the old like bulletin board system days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. CompuServe, AOL, and Prodigy too were the commercial services, and they they also had the equivalent of support groups in their respective services. They did. I, I used to work for CompuServe, and that's where that's where I found the internet. So it's it's interesting where we've got a similar story so far with yep. technology really helping us get through difficult times. And of course, I'm I'm really sorry about the loss of your friend. Thank you. Um, it was a really difficult time in my life, and using that support group really helped me and it really helped me understand the power that such support groups held for people. If only they knew about them. Uh, the fact that I came upon it, it was only because I had some mad computer skills at the time. And computers were a hobby of mine. So I, I understood how to search for that type of group on Usenet at the time. It's not, it was not a simple process and you had to, to be in academia back then. You had to you know, be associated with the university as a student or a professor or something, even to access that part of the internet. So that got me thinking, well, if this helped me so much and it's helping other people as much as I can see that it is, wouldn't it be great if more people knew about this? So I started collecting, uh, I started indexing all these support groups that were, that existed back in 1990 and 91 and uh, published those indexes on those groups to, to let people know about other great emotional support and psychology groups that existed so people could find them and find each other. And this was all before psychcentral.com was a registered domain name. Yep. Yep. 
And now here we are. So it's, it's obviously you did this for five years, which is not an insignificant amount of time. This wasn't a whim for you. This was something that was a major part of your life for half a decade. I was actually deeply involved in, in news groups back then uh, because that was the modality that people used to have online discussions. There was no Reddit. There was no other way of doing that. Well, that's not entirely true. There's a thing called mailing lists that still exist today, too. And that's where you get the online discussion. It comes right to your email box. And those remain widely used in, in many parts of the Internet. So now we're at 1995, 25 years ago. So in 95, it looked like the web was going to be the phenomena that it turned out to be. And I said, well... This is a good place to uh, to publish a website and to put these indexes to give them a home, to point people to a website and say, here, you can go and find an online support group. Here, you can go and find a group about psychology or, or some related topic. And it's so much easier than trying to publish these on, on news groups. So the first couple of years, there was no psychcentral.com domain because domains back then were also pretty expensive. So what most people did is that they would use an internet service provider's domain and, and they would have lots of users, much like um, if you remember early websites that allowed people to build their own website, like GeoCities. Like Geo yes, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> so you had your website and it hung off the geocities.com domain. That's where Psych Central originally lived, first in uh, upstate New York, where I did my internship. Eventually, I, I went out and uh, spent the, I think it was like 50 or $60 a year to have a dot-com domain back then. So, you know, that's a, it was a pretty significant investment. So I had to make sure that I, uh, I was ready to make that commitment to SiteCentral.com. And it was perfectly okay before, before like 2000 to not like have your own domain. That was more of a corporate thing. So here we are, we've, we've now registered psychcentral.com. What did the site look like when you made the leap from, you know, hanging off somebody else's domain name? So what sort of took place in these transitional years, these startup years? Well, at first it was more of a hobby site for me. I mean, it, was, it literally was a, a way of publishing these indexes and learning HTML and coding for the internet and doing that and understanding how graphics worked and how you had to do it all back then. There was no, there was no such career as a web developer. HTML was built to be simple and easily learned. And so anybody could create their own website. I taught many conference workshops about how a clinician, how a therapist could build their own website because it was that easy. Yeah, and you can still do it today. You can build a very simple website using raw HTML you, you coding directly from an application like Notepad or WordPad or something like that. Um, so the, the first couple of years, the website didn't have a lot. It was maybe like a dozen pages. And um, a bunch of those pages were the indexes of the support groups. To put it in 2020 talk, it was basically just a list of links. Yes, it was a list of links because that's, it's hard to understand this, but Yahoo at the time in 1995 was the only search directory and, and Yahoo was just a list of links curated by human editors. And that's what made it special. But back in 95, 96, 97, the web was small enough that you could actually have humans go around looking for new websites to put into their directory. And so that's basically what I was doing. I was doing a specialized directory of links for mental health, for psychology. Did that have a blog on it? Were you writing articles back then or is this? So that's a good question about blogging because I did start blogging in, I believe it was 1999. And I wasn't satisfied with any of the blogging software available at the time because it was all pretty rudimentary and didn't quite do everything that I wanted it to do. And so I coded my own blog software to become a blogger. And I coded that in Perl. And I maintained it for a couple of years until WordPress came around. And uh, that was in the early 2000s. When did psychcentral.com start looking 
how it looks today. And I, I don't mean design wise. I mean, you know, having all of the blogs, having the forums, having the the news and all of the stuff that people have come to rely on today. From 1995 to 2006, for the, those first 11 years, it grew bit by bit, piece by piece. I worked on it in my spare time. It was not my full-time gig. I had other jobs working for other companies, helping them build mental health websites. I added pages here and there where I could, when I could, when I had the time. It was kind of done, you know, randomly, haphazardly. I didn't really have a clear vision for what I wanted to be and become because I was doing this work for other companies. And But I, I did see it that it, it had a good traffic profile, that it still continued to get a lot of traffic despite it not being as big as some other websites out there or as in-depth about different mental health issues. And I, I also encouraged a lot of people to publish on the site if they had an article or if they wanted to tell their personal story about dealing with mental health issues or dealing with treatment and whatnot. So I published a lot of um, other people's stories, other people's writing on the site as well. In 2006, that's when I decided I had had enough of working for the man <laughs> and, and in different startups and seeing all the ways that they were doing things wrong and spending money on things that didn't matter. And I was so sick of seeing that. I was seeing you know millions of dollars just basically be wasted and poured down the drain. And so in 2006, I said, look, I can do this better. I can do this more thoughtfully. And I can do this independent of any industry influence, whether it be pharma, whether it be my own biases toward psychotherapy. I believe we can create a better mental health website that has information that we keep updated, that we add new stuff to, that we have a blog. 2006 was really the tipping point, the turning point for Site Central because I started focusing on it full time. It started paying my bills. And it allowed me to hire my first couple of uh, staffers. We'll be right back after we hear from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. We're back discussing the 25th anniversary of PsychCentral.com with founder Dr. John Grohall. Now, I know that Psych Central's credo is to provide the best evidence-based mental health and psychology information regardless of profession. All voices are important and should be elevated in the discourse about mental illness and mental health. When did that credo come along? The background for the credo comes from my seeing back in my graduate school days, my observing that the professions didn't talk to each other. Psychiatrists didn't talk to psychologists. Clinical social workers didn't talk to psychiatrists or psychologists. That each of these were their own individual silos in training and then in practice, in research, and then trying to get those research results disseminated to clinicians. And there was no reason for it. <laughs> we're all trying to work on the same disorders. And it, I found it so frustrating because at the end of the day, all the mental health professionals, and there's, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine different types of mental health professionals, they're all doing the same kinds of things. They're trying to help people grapple with difficult things in their lives, whether they be diagnosed mental illness or personality concern, or just coping with a life issue. And I saw no reason for this disconnect between the professions. I, I, it really annoyed me. And I talked to other colleagues and found surprisingly that they were open to the idea, you know, that there is this desire to coordinate and communicate more between professions, but it just doesn't happen. So from the onset of building Site Central, I very strongly believe that we should be agnostic in our 
our development and in our communications, the, the way we write content, the topics we focus on, we should try and be as objective as possible, as independent as possible, and really just look at what does the research say? Does the research say therapy works best for this disorder? Or does the research say medications work best or some combination of the two? Or is there a third modality that you should consider? And I just put aside any professional biases as much as humanly possible and try to create the content that um, reflects that belief in the credo. The last part of the credo is that it's not a conversation just that for professionals to be having amongst themselves. The most important part of the conversation is patients, our clients, and they need to be a part of the conversation. Their stories need to be heard. And from day one, I always believe that. And I try and um, I, I try to create a platform where patient stories could also be a part of the conversation. And in, in my view, the most important part. John, it's interesting. I, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder back in 2003, and it was it was 2006, 2007 before I would say that I started to become a mental health advocate. And for years, I sort of bopped around in the siloed system that you speak of. I was a person with lived experience, or I was a consumer, a peer, a patient. And when I met up with websites that wanted to talk about you know the the research and the facts they they had no interest in my voice because they believed that my voice was opinion and then i met up with you and that was fantastic because you understood that the patient voice is relevant and the clinician voice is relevant and the caregiver voice is relevant and psychcentral.com really has all of these voices coexisting in perfect harmony. So it's it's no surprise that somebody like me ended up on Psych Central because my only other choice would really to be on just a patient-only website. And I, like you, feel that that just leaves so much information out. And it also sort of makes us hostile to each other. Do you find that everybody coexists well on psychcentral.com? You know, that's the goal. That That is what we strive to be and what we strive for the site to reflect, that all of these voices are equal. I don't know that, you know, we always are successful at doing that as well as we could, but we do try. And it is rooted firmly in the belief that the patient voice isn't just one of many. It, I would argue it's it's the most important. It's the one that's least heard and is often left out of the conversation altogether. And I find that just a horrible, horrible bias in a lot of websites out there, that they don't include the patient voice or it's sectioned off into its own special patient section. You know, here are the patient stories. I, I don't believe in that. I, I believe that it should be as integral and as well integrated into the conversation as much as any other voice because we're talking about patient lives here. They need to be a part of the solution. They need to be a part of an active part of their treatment, or in many cases, the treatment simply isn't that effective. Well, John, obviously you're going to get no argument from me as I do want to commend you strongly for doing this because I think that people who don't live with mental illness don't realize how often the patient voice is pushed down. So I was I was very surprised when I found Psych Central just as a user. It came up in a in a Google search. And I, I like this because it forced me to learn about all sides. And I think that that made me not only a better mental health advocate, but honestly, I think it allowed me to get better care. And I know that that is a, a common thing that I hear uh, running the podcast and and doing the work that I do, so of course, complete kudos to you. Thank you, thank you. I, it, but it's not me. I, I have a hard time accepting such things because I do the platform and I do what we've created here with the help and support and standing on the shoulders of dozens of staffers like yourself. It wouldn't be possible to have the great resources that we have on Psych Central without people like you, without people like our managing editor, Sarah Newman, without all the other great editors and contributors that we have. It's just, they are all individually amazing people and they've helped 
you know, make Seg Central what it is today. And of course, it would be nothing today if we weren't able to actually speak to people in a way that they find useful. Because we have somewhere between six and seven million unique users every month, that also helps us do the kind of work that we're trying to do. John, we've talked about the past. We've talked about the present. What's the future of Psych Central? The future of Psych Central is um, it's always a question in my mind because it, it, we've had a great 14 years as, as a full-time ongoing concern. The online landscape over the past four or five years has definitely gotten a lot more difficult to navigate with Google and, and primarily Google because that's the search engine that everybody uses. And their algorithm changes. A small digital publisher like Site Central has a much more challenging time navigating these kinds of algorithm changes that don't seem to make very much sense to us or, or to a lot of other health publishers. That's definitely been a challenge for us. So in the future, I, I'd like to hope that Google continues to listen to small publishers like us and is aware that when they change the algorithm and it can really hurt publishers that have been providing health information before they were even before they were even a business, before they were even a company. I mean, we've been around before WebMD. We've been around long before Google. Part of the future of Psych Central is trying to maintain our leadership position as an independent mental health resource. I think some of the ways that we can improve and, and do some awesome things in this space is, for instance, to put together a great app. We've done an app in the past, but it was more just a way of interacting with our website. And we'd like to do an app that is more intervention-based and helps people wherever they are in their own mental health journey to try and become a better person, to try and cope better with the kinds of things that life is throwing at them, whether they're mental health issues or relationship issues. And I see a lot of potential there. So that's something that we're looking to get started with this year and hopefully have something out within a year's time or so. The future, as Tom Petty reminds us, is wide open. And I believe that we have still only touched the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's possible to help people with mental health issues and concerns in their own daily lives. Well, John, I, I can't thank you enough for starting Psych Central. And I can't thank you enough for being open to to evolving. It wasn't three years ago, actually on November 19th, 2017, we aired the very first episode of the Psych Central podcast, where we had you as a guest telling us all about Psych Central. And I, I listen to that episode sometimes and it really just reminds me of how far we have come with the podcast in the last three years. And of course, thank you for being willing to invest in podcasting at a time when, well, frankly, most people were rolling their eyes and saying, ugh, everybody has a podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things that we'd like to innovate. We'd like to see what kind of platforms, what kind of things people are interested in doing and trying to reach them wherever they are. I think that's so important. If they're into podcasting, why wouldn't you have a platform? Why wouldn't you have some podcasts to try and help people understand mental health better, psychology better? Well, I guarantee that every listener of this show could not agree with you more. John, this was great. Do you uh, want to come back and say five years for the 30th anniversary of psychcentral.com? Gabe, I think that would be a great thing to look forward to. And I, I'm going, I'm going to put it on my calendar. Well, John, I agree. And it's a date. All right, everybody, here's what we need you to do. If you like the show, please subscribe, please rank us, review us, use your words and tell people why you like us, share us on social media, send us an emails, mention us in support groups. If you're at dinner with your mother and your board, tell her all about the Psych Central podcast. And remember, you can get one week of free, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere, simply by visiting betterhelp.com slash psych central. And we will see everybody next week. You've been listening to the Psych Central Podcast. Want your audience to be wowed at your next event? Feature an appearance and live recording of the Psych Central Podcast right from your stage. For more details or to book an event, please email us at show at psychcentral.com. 
previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show or on your favorite podcast player. Psych Central is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website run by mental health professionals. Overseen by Dr. John Grohall, Psych Central offers trusted resources and quizzes to help answer your questions about mental health, personality, psychotherapy, and more. Please visit us today at psychcentral.com. To learn more about our host, Gabe Howard, please visit his website at gabehoward.com. Thank you for listening, and please share with your friends, family, and followers.